Good morning. I just woke up. Yeah, it's seven o'clock here in Arizona. I've been pushing it pretty hard. I've been pretty consistently going to bed between one and three. I'm waking up at seven. It's hard to wake up. I lay here for a while, but let's see what's going on today. We at Three Timbers are actually in a pretty tough situation right now. We're struggling. I mean, our operations are not going in Minnesota right now because, well, it's winter and our operations in Arizona, operations wise, it's actually good. This is the first time our ops have been working amazing. But the problem we're having is we're out of jobs. Uh, I've been here for three weeks, just working, 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 getting quotes out, quotes out, quotes out, nothing. We've been given huge discounts. We've been responding. We've done follow-ups. We do seven follow-ups for every person that calls. We do seven follow-ups after every quote. We talk, we text, we email, and there's just nothing. There's a really good chance that we are getting squeezed out of the market here because I could be wrong and I'm not sure. I'm starting to think I'm gonna just give away a bunch of gift cards to people to tell us why they're not going with us, but every single person says that our delivery is above and beyond the best. And let me show you why. We're gonna switch to my computer quick. So let me start by showing you where we are financially. Three Timbers only has $139,000 in the bank account. And for some of you, you guys might be thinking, what, that's great, congratulations. That's fine, but what I need to tell you guys is approximately four weeks ago, Three Timbers had $242,000 in the bank account. So we're down a hundred grand over the span of a month. And the reason that is, is because we have real expenditures as a million dollar company. We have workers comp that we pay for all through the year, whether we have guys or not. Insurance, cost of trucks, cost of equipment. And we have guys come down to Arizona. We have to pay those guys while they're here, whether we have work or not. So let's go over to our problem of work. Look at this. We have about nothing in the queue. Only 20 grand owed our way. We have four approved quotes against the 237 quotes that we're waiting on response on. And when we start looking at these, look, $5,000, nope. 1300, 400, 20,000, 13,000, 2,000, 3,000, 39,000, 500, 48,000, 1,000, 48,000, 4,000, 13,000. And the list goes on and on and on and on. We essentially have quoted a million and a half, maybe $2 million in jobs recently without anyone accepting diddly squat. <laughs> And that is a huge rarity for us. So we remind them after a certain amount of days. We remind them after 15 days. We have a kind and final reminder at 30. We have a final notice at 30 plus and we have a receipt. And then at the very end, we have bis gift baskets that we send out. We invite them to, to our referral program. We ask them to give Google reviews. We upsell them with other maintenance products. So we have a whole system lined up. And beyond that, we have more packets than ever before. We have more learning material than ever before. We have an online nursery now so people can get discounts on their products. We're also doing free MCADs for every single client. So these are huge three-dimensional, beautiful pieces. I mean, we send MCADs of every project. So even if someone wants like a $6,000 job, give them an exact idea of what their yard would look like what the plants would look like, what undulations would look like. So we're going above and beyond because what else are we gonna do? It appears to us that we are a very legit company, right? We have our license, our OC number, we have workers comp, we have insurance, do all the solid business practices. We make sure all of our work is overbuilt and done correctly. And what's happening is we are actually sending out these quotes and people are taking these quotes and they are just giving them to another company that's way cheaper. It's hard for us to compete with that because in Arizona specifically, there are a lot of illegal immigrants. By all means, you can have whatever opinion you want on that. But when they're illegal, a lot of bad things happen in certain industries. Like landscaping specifically, you have guys working in the field for five bucks. And if those guys wanna leave, or they wanna to move to a different location or they say that's not enough money or whatever else, 
the employer will just threaten them with, hey, you're not a legal immigrant. We can send you right back or report you. So they're just handcuffing people. But what it allows these companies to do is these companies are going out and they're pricing their work at 30 bucks an hour. We're still getting rejected and we have our price all the way down to 50 an hour. I know that sounds like a lot, but for us, that's like our break even. Like that will allow us to pay the guys and pay for workers comp, pay for insurance. And we probably honestly at 50, we probably still lose money. That's just the reality of it. We can't compete with the legit companies that are hiring illegal immigrants and charging 30 to 40. And then we have a whole nother level of competition where any job that's semi easy, we have, and these are, this is not stereotypical. These are just their names. We might have Jorge and Jose that just recently crossed the border. They got a truck for 500 bucks and they're going out and they're doing the same job that we would price for a thousand just to break even. They go and price that thing at 200 or 150 because they have no overhead. They're not paying any taxes. They don't have any insurance. It's nothing, right? They have no costs. That's definitely something that we are just, we are battling right now. We're gonna be riding it out now. I'm, I'm guessing we're gonna dip into like 50,000, 40,000 in the account and it's gonna get real stressful. I can feel it. Cause usually when you have a problem now, you really feel it out in the future. So just trying to prep now, that's what's going on here. And let's get on with the day. Trying to get us out in front of as many people as possible, do as many quotes as possible, get as many pricing sheets out there as possible. Just really giving us as many chances as we possibly can to get someone accepted at the prices that we need things to be accepted at. That's the reality of the sitch. It seems like the same thing over and over and over again, but there's really nothing more important than that. There's nothing more pressing. There's, uh, there aren't any other bottlenecks in the company that are more pressing than just having more work and having more of a buffer and filling up the queue. Nothing more pressing. So gotta keep just doing these same things over and over. Reach out to clients, meet with clients, get them quotes. Learn from those quotes, see if we can change anything, see how close we can get to other people's pricing. Do it again, do it again perfect the offer, improve the offer, improve the designs, improve the emails, improve the conversations. Looks like the guys are out for lunch. I was gonna come say hi, how oh, sad. Let's take a look at this project as long as we're here. Hello? <laughs> I said I didn't think anyone was here. Just hidden in the cold. You guys can see through here, it's um, they tore out all of this. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're doing a complete refresh. They have all of the flags kind of set up where our riprap will go and they're marking where different drip lines are throughout. So riprap is going to come down through here, kind of curve on through. We're adding mounds throughout just to give it some more undulation and then do plants all through here. Plants, boulders, more rock. It's going to be sweet. You guys want to see something cool? Look at these. Wow, so pretty. Three timber flags. That's so neat, Bobby. Yeah. So, I guess the main guys are gone right now, but yeah, making progress over here. Just needed to touch base, make sure things were going okay. Okay. Well, progressing. Crew's looking good, making good progress. They were hiding, so you can see it. Hey, you can see red stockpiled dirt here and rock. So now he's just loading up the trailer so they can run like really, really quick, dumping the dirt, filling up, bringing that to the dump really fast, and just keep moving, moving, moving while these guys are over there just leveling, leveling things out, adding some contours to the landscape. When I talk about repetitiveness, I mean, look behind me. It's a maintenance job that they want to quote on. More weeds there, stuff like that. I mean, I meet with three to four people a week right now and we're just uh, not getting strong responses, like I said, because of our pricing. I mean, I just got our December numbers and December was really quiet. You know, you can't be an entrepreneur if you're not okay with failure and getting rejected. Out of those 65 quotes we send, I'd say the average quote out of the 65, two people accepted quotes. So like you gotta get used to that. And 
it's your job to keep getting up, keep improving morale, keep paying for other people's time and keep providing for their families while you're trying to figure out how to provide for your own. That was a pretty long experience. This is $500 in booklets and it didn't print right. So this is all fine. This, they don't print grays well, I guess. So those aren't outlined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and change the file so it can make all the grays darker and they're gonna reprint it. But one positive is, they still give me these, so we have an extra 25 of them. I don't outline the Google reviews as well, but I'll take that for free. Over 500 bucks, count me in. Back at home base, apartment office. I miss this place when I have to go home, but it's not bad, it's nice. Nice little view of a building, I guess. So I guess we'll fix this and try that again. I wonder how dark it has to be to show up. That's not very good looking though. Maybe we'll change it to tan. Man, that's ugly guys. I don't know. I just said that gray does not show up for them. So I don't know what else to do. That shows up just fine. Anyways, I'm here for two hours and then back on the cycle. More quoting baby. Let's go. Got a quote out, got some templates written. It's good. Got that PDF changed and sent in, and now I get to go enjoy the outdoors, do some night quotes. By night, I mean, it's just the afternoon, late afternoon, it's not night. So I just got to another quote this evening, and I'm actually gonna walk through this with you guys, because why not? And then I can share this with the team once we get the job. We're looking to do a zero scape in here. So he really likes the neighbor's yard. Wants it to be more desert than this with a couple of trees and potentially something with some color along the edge. Maybe a bougainvillea vine to hide that wall. We do some plants all through here. He really likes the clean modern look. So he really likes straight lines, linear look, golden barrels, agaves, things that look nice and clean. Tearing out this wall, tearing out this sidewalk in here. And we do a paver patio in here that leads up to the leads up to the front door and maybe we'd run that paver patio somewhere in here and so then it'd be like a gray paver that would tie into the the driveway itself gray paver all the way up and then soldier course it down and this would be another paver parking pad you got a nice gap along the house so easy to use a machine. This might be the difficult part, cutting along this pillar itself. This definitely has a footing. You can see the footing right in there. So we'll take out the rock, but maybe we can use that dirt and move it over here to just give some more height. This is a late, late bid. This is kind of a fun project. Let me show you. So this is kind of a bigger one. Let's start at the front here, because this is kind of the order that we went in with the customer. Here, tear this out, all right? We do a nice linear path, 90 and in. Great paver, soldier course around it. Bougainvillea on a trellis there, so a vine. And then along this edge, he just, he really likes the totem pole cactuses or the Mexican fence post, something really clean along the edge. And we take those, those pavers, right? We take the bigger ones four by eight, so we make a nice edge along here. We might run a couple of lights over here, a couple of outdoor lighting deals. And yeah, so that would be fun. We would actually be cutting this wall here, right? Cut, get rid of that. Leave this as an existing wall. Leave this as an existing planter. Leave this inside existing planter, that 90s into that far wall. We do plants along here, okay? And then here, we're gonna tear this out. Remember, this wall's gone. We're gonna extend this out by feet, run it linear like this across the yard. At this point, corner of the house, you can see I'm standing right here, linear off of there. We're gonna have a wall that jots off to the left, comes over probably five feet, hits another 90 across here, and then 90 is right up against the house. Um, it's not gonna touch the house, there's gonna be a gap. And then right here in the wall, there'd be a see-through fireplace. And then everything in the middle of this, this whole section in here would all be pavers, gray pavers, hopefully a three-piece, gray pavers, three piece up against the house. This is the irrigation box we'd have to move. Now, if you imagine this wall, right, coming forward, 
to here along our new paver. So it's gonna be wall there, gap where the pavers are, then wall across the face, then another gap because this is going to be a paver walkway that comes to the sidewalk. So you have a nice straight paver walkway that goes to the house, wall like I said, and then wall off of the paver walkway, jot down, fireplace, wall, boom. We're gonna take out this grass. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the dirt from the base in here, of the patio, we're gonna move that over here to add undulations and hills. And then we're gonna take these boulders and we're gonna be able to move them around to kind of give it some, some fun. And we'll do some low voltage lighting on some of the cactus and the trees over in here. And the last thing is after we do this fireplace and you know, you got your wall around the outside, we're gonna do edging that will match the pavers. Frame it in straight, straight edging in front of the wall. Boom, 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 and then plants. I ended up being on the phone for like two hours after that consultation. I've been trying really hard to make sure no matter how busy we are, how tight things are, I work out for at least an hour every day because, you know, in the past, I let my health get away from me. And I'm still a little chucky, but I wanna make sure that I don't get to the point where I'm fat again. And, you know, health makes you just run a whole lot better. By run, I mean run the business better. If you can be good at other portions of your life, you're usually a lot better at the main thing you're focused on. So, yeah, just gonna wrap this up. I don't like getting B roll in a gym. I just feel too freaking awkward taking videos, people working out. Made it back. Just preparing my dinner of champions. So dumb. You guys wanna see what I eat every night? Pretty good, actually. Mashed potatoes, chicken, broccoli. I don't eat the beans, they're squeaky and I don't like them. Mmm, that looks good. Okay, so each one of those boxes there, five pounds, chicken, mashed potatoes, broccoli. Over the last two weeks, I've had seven of those boxes. Get them from Whole Foods, they're pre-made. So I throw them in the oven and then, I don't know why I put the whole thing in the oven and then I end up microwaving the last half of it. It's absurd, but delicious. Not great when you're on your 35th pound of it, but I just like habits, doing things like over and over and over again. I'm really bad at switching things up. If I find something that's semi-working and it's simplistic, and I can just do it over and over, I just do it over and over. I'm gonna hunker down, buckle down, whatever the term is, get some quotes out, try to find some freaking work before I leave on Friday. Saying the rosary at night, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying everything, guys. I'm trying everything, and I'm not mocking faith, because faith is a good thing. All in for the next week, and I think I'll uh, do one of my common vlogs. The good old normal one when I'm driving across America. All right, I love all of you. I'll see you in the next episode of The Mason Game.